The LA Clippers somehow find a way to get a win in Minnesota, a place that they got beat earlier this season and a team in which they looked like they were completely outmatched against. But a defensive masterclass let the Clippers prevail by a point in the Twin Cities. Going to be talking about how they got it done on today's Locked on Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir, you are locking in with the Clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. I'm your host, Darren Vizieri, born and raised in L.A. and in my 19th season as a Clipper fan. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more L.A. Clipper LA Sports and NBA content and Locked on Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. And I want you to let me know anything about this game. What did you think of the way the Clippers clamped down? We beat Minnesota. I thought we were doomed against Minnesota this year after the last time we played them. And I'm going to be talking about if I was wrong in this episode. You know, I, I didn't say we're guaranteed to lose to them in the playoffs, but I said it's a bad matchup. The second worst matchup to Denver, maybe the worst. Um, and then I'm going to be just talking about this game and Kawhi and Norman Powell, who I thought were the two standouts clearly for us. But wow. And before we get started, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot at any bet right now. But Clippers winning this one in a slugfest, a 2000 scoreline. 89 to 88 Clippers. By the way, if you're wondering what's wrong with my voice, I wonder if it sounds more raspy or like I've lost it. I absolutely have. <laughs> Last episode, I talked about that I had two playoff games in the park to coach, and it was the gyms were so loud, I had to scream. My voice is done, so apologies, guys. But, oh, 89-88, we won. Like, and I want to say... That it was, because in today's NBA, it's so much easier to create good shots. So a lot of times when you see a game like that, it'll be just the guys got open shots and they just were breaking. But this was actually a game of hard-nosed defense from both sides. I really thought it was a great game, but also an amazing win. We beat the Wolves in Minnesota after losing to the Lakers. We've been looking really suspect since the All-Star break. We beat Washington. Okay, we won by 25 points against Washington. Washington's garbage. No offense to any Wizards fans. They have a championship. We don't, all right? If any Wizards fans are offended, there you go. (laughs) But they're, they're trash right now. They're a joke of a ball club. And we did not play well against Sacramento. We did not play well against the Lakers. I mean, I guess the Lakers, we had them for three quarters, to be honest. But it just goes to show that Paul George even when he doesn't shoot well. I think this was an amazing example of why what I proved me right about Paul George, even when he's not shooting well. Look at the way he was able to impact the game. And the funny part is, in the first half, he still did his bonehead stuff. He still had ridiculous offensive possessions throughout the game. But his presence helped us get this win. You cannot tell me he didn't. And I'm going to be getting in more depth about that. But the defense is really what stood out. We just haven't looked the same defensively for a while. The fact that we were able to clamp down like this, now let me just say this, Minnesota's offense is not crazy good. We've made it look better than it has. And I think one thing I mentioned the last time we lost to these guys, Jaden McDaniels, is he going to have that kind of shot-making game consistently? And the answer is no. The answer is that he's the weak link out there in terms of offense. Because here's that... The thing, he obviously has more off-the-bounce ability than like Rudy Gobert or maybe self-creation as Rudy Gobert. But the thing is, we're talking about Gobert as a roller. 
He has a lot of utility that way. You know, he's a good roller. You've got to account for him. Jaden McDaniels is the guy that, you know, are you giving up a Rudy Gobert dunk? You're giving up a three for McDaniels. Of course, you're going to give up a three for McDaniels. So that's where you, every team is going to try to force the Wolves in the playoffs. And in the beginning of this game, the crazy part was it felt like it was just another game against Minnesota. We were about to get absolutely clapped. They were up 30-15. to Carl Anthony Towns was getting whatever he wanted. You know, we had, I believe Kawhi started out on Cat. Zubats, who was back, by the way, which was good to see. Um, it was He only played 18 minutes, though, and didn't play any of the fourth quarter. So in terms of Zoo, or 19 minutes, I wonder if he wasn't 100%. He didn't look very involved compared to normal, so I think he's working his way back. and He'll probably be fine by next game. But Zoo was guarding Gobert. He had Kawhi on Towns. I believe Paul George was on the Ant-Man to start, but Paul George and Terrence were you know, switching off on that one throughout the first half, and then Kawhi actually, I think, guarded Ant the most in the second half. But in the first half, it was those guys and then James Harden guarding McDaniels, and you, the Clippers were switching one through four. One thing I felt was interesting was instead of having Zoo play drop coverage against the Ant-Man, they actually had him come out. And so we would just tag Gobert on the roll, meaning somebody would rotate and take that rim run away from Gobert, but it was leaving the threes open. And Towns, uh, I forget who else made threes for them to start the game. Currently, Towns made two. Monty, Monty Morris made two. Nikhil Alexander Walker made two. By the way, the guy that we really were pretty fortunate was just really off. That has killed us a little bit these first two games. Nas Reed. He had three points, and he was 0 for 7. And 0 for 3 from 3 in 21 minutes. A minus 18 for them. That's, you know, some of those shots were open. He usually makes it. But for the most part, the Clippers' defense really tightened up after that 30-15 to 15 start. We were down 30 to 18 after one. And I have to say, you know, Terrence Mann, he was struggling in that first quarter guarding Cat and Ant. But the thing, here's the thing about Terrence, right? He's probably going to get scored on more than anyone in one on one situations because he's guarding the best players. You know, so that being said, he's still got to be a little bit better one on one. I, I've said what I, I've said my truth about Terrence. I don't think he can be your best point of attack, guard the best player defender on a championship team. I really don't. But he can maybe be, well, this is what the Clippers used him as tonight, or on Sunday. You have him guard the best players in the first half, and then second half you start to go more Kawhi PG-centric. You know, that, that way you're conserving them a bit. But And I think that was what we were doing mostly in that winning streak and when we were hot. It feels like we've kind of gone away from that and kept Amir and Terrence on these players as the game has gone on. And then teams will obviously switch hunt and look for Norman James. Uh, they'll never go at Kawhi. But what really tightened up the defense, in my opinion, was Paul George ended up taking Carl Anthony Towns the rest of the way, specifically in the second half. And then Kawhi took the Ant-Man, and things changed. Terrence Mann got Mike Conley, and the Wolves were struggling to get good shots. They were struggling to get good shots. And so the strategy of sending Zoo out on the screens wasn't working as well. Daniel Tice was playing drop coverage, and he was doing a pretty decent job. Yeah, he got dunked on once. Uh, I believe it was, I forget who dunked on him. So McDaniels, I don't know. Remind me in the comments. But he was working hard out there, and that's exactly why, and props to Ty Lue for realizing it, exactly why I said he should be playing instead of Mason. And he ended up closing the game, Daniel Tice. But I just love the way Paul George started getting physical with Cat. And then we were sending doubles at Cat. And I have to give him credit. He was making some great passes. Excellent passes. But for the most part, that got the ball out of his hands. And there was even one time where they did exactly what I said on the last pod. And I was very, uh, I was like, man, that's going to make me look good. <laughs> but they doubled. All, it's not rocket science to figure it out, figure it out though. Doubling Cat and then let, rotating until they get the ball to McDaniels. We did that once or twice. So really solid defensive effort though from our guys it really comes down to effort i don't know how they can just flip that switch like that but can they do that over the course of 16 wins in the playoffs against the highest level of competition i don't know they got to start getting back to being more aggressive physical at, on the defensive end and just taking more pride every single night focusing talking i mean Kawhi, you're always going to get his 
defensive effort. Terrence Mann, in the second half, he really t uh, tightened up and got very physical on the perimeter. And I thought, honestly, Terrence's offense the last couple of games has been better than his defense. And I think in that this game, it applied as well. He was just solid. But I thought Amir Coffey, last two, two, three games, he's gone back to what he was doing pre-All-Star break. And I love his one-on-one -on -one defense, his activity hands-wise. But also Daniel Tice, as I mentioned, around the basket, containing the ball handlers well when they would get a step on our point of attack guys. He did a good job containing, making them kick it out. And then you have James Harden, who had a couple of strips as well. And somebody I want to give a shout out to, Bones Island. You know, this was our first game without Russell Westbrook, who's out with that hand fracture. We still haven't heard for how long. Bones Highland played 14 minutes, and it was a true backup kind of situation where James Harden came out, Bones Highland came in, and then when Bones Highland was out, Harden was in. They didn't share the court at all. But Bones, what I was so impressed with, he didn't shot hunt at all really to me. He was 0 for 3. One time he got stuffed by Gobert. But 0 for 3, I don't even remember the other two shots like that. But defensively, he was so solid. I don't think he got scored on or taken advantage of one time. He knew where he had to be. He was active. He was getting physical. He was picking up the ball. Man, he did nothing wrong in my opinion, really. Had some good passes. That's a great early sign seeing Bones Highland play like that because we're going to have him as our backup going forward. Bone, it's unfortunate what happened to Bones. He's a good player, and I have more faith in them than most. That Here's the thing, actually. I don't want to say that most, a lot of Clipper fans like him. It's the fans from around the league that are judging him from what they saw in Denver. And they're just like, oh, he's inefficient and this and that. But they don't know the potential that Bones has. And I think for whatever reason in today's NBA, we are so harsh on young players and are so quick to judge them when they are like 23-year-old kids, like younger than me. And I look young as hell talking on this show. So, I mean, are you kidding? Let's, let's, let's cut him some slack. But huge defense overall by the Clippers. It's what won us the game. It's as simple as that. The Minnesota Timberwolves shot 39% from the field in this game. 27% from three. They were 94% from the line, though. The Clippers only shot 38% from the field and 29% from three. So it was just, again, a slugfest of good defense on both sides. You know they're going to be great defensively. They have fantastic point of attack, guys. Gobert changed so many shots, but we got the W by one point. And we're going to be talking about more of how, maybe more the off offensive side of things, and in my opinion, the two standout performers. Not even in my opinion, just the two standout performers. Fact. I got to tell you a little something about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Bet on the Clippers to win the championship. Do it. The odds, I think, have probably gotten a little bit worse the last couple of weeks, which is why you got to go bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, Clippers winning this one. 89-88 at the Target Center in Minnesota. They get their first win against the Wolves this season. One of my favorite wins of the season. And as I said, it really started with the clampdown defensively. And Daniel Tice, for him to close the game, you know, if you're wondering, why did he do that, Ty Lu? Well, one, I think Tice was just playing better than Zoo. Tipping the ball out on offensive rebounds. I think that may have only happened once, but so active, in my opinion, when he's in. He actually had four offensive rebounds, 13 for the game. Four points, 13 rebounds, and a plus 14. I mean, what else you got to say? Two for seven, and four of those misses were threes. But here's the thing. Just the threat of him kind of popping out there was keeping Gobert a little bit more on his toes in ter terms of getting out to the perimeter. Because if Tyson's out there and then he sets, let's say, a dribble handoff screen for Kawhi or Paul and Gobert's sinking way down deep in the paint, obviously without trying to get a defensive three-second violation. Kawhi and Paul, whoever's coming off that screen, is walking into wide-open jump shots. So he's got to be alert even when Zoo's out there, but with Tice, maybe just a little bit higher. And 
even though Tice missed, I think it, he still was ignored. I'm going to be real. He was still ignored, but it was slightly different than Zoo. It was. And it also just gives James a little bit more room to operate because when he's coming off the screen, even though he might see two Wolves shirts, he's not seeing another body that potentially is bringing in another defender from the weak side and crowding the paint even more because his man is, or Zoo is rolling, Tice is popping. So it makes that pass. And sometimes you can throw that pass to Tice and then flow into another dribble handoff kind of situation because the guy that was guarding Tice originally has to help on the orig on the first screen for Harden. So I, I wonder if that sounded too technical, but you should know what I mean by that, I think. <laughs> I tried to slow it down. Sometimes I get, a, I get a ahead of myself with those. But let's talk about the two standouts in this one. Kawhi Leonard, Norman Powell. Kawhi, again, really... You know what? I don't want to say again, because even though he's the most consistent, I don't believe that when we've won... And this was our 40th win of the season, by the way. Actually, no, I'm sorry. 39th. 39 and 20. That's a pretty good record. We didn't do the Phil Jackson 40 before 20 rule, which he says is, you know, you got to win 40 games before you lose 20. But, man, if we're 40 and 20, does that still qualify? Kawhi did carry us in this one, though. He really did. He really, And he was fantastic on both ends of the floor like usual. But I just love, love the diversity in Kawhi's shots, but the fact that he has go-to moves and go-to shots and spots, unlike Paul George. Paul George's spot is, like, everywhere, but he doesn't really have a spot. You know what I mean? Kawhi... He, there were so many times he came curling off the of screens tight around the free throw line. So he's literally just catching and turning and shooting without even putting the ball on the floor. And that's difficult to guard when you already have all your eyes on James Harden holding the ball behind the three, and then he's hitting Kawhi in movement, and he's getting right into his shot. And even if he's not getting right into his shot, he'll put the ball on the floor, get into your chest, turn, create that separation, and knock down contested shots. I just love his fundamentals. There was one time where he was around the basket, and he just pivoted, pivoted, and he split Anderson and Gobert for a wide-open layup. It was like comedy. The best we've ever had on this in this franchise. Just a matter of having those that playoff health where, so he can perform and solidify that mantle of greatest Clipper of all time with you know a finals appearance or hopefully the ultimate goal. But, I mean, man. So impressive, his shot making and how easy he makes it look. And you know one thing I'll say? One of the biggest reasons we won this game? In the first two games, the Ant-Man was the best player on the court. In this game, Kawhi Leonard was the best player on the court. Even though he made me a little nervous in the fourth. I mean, some of those shots were terrible. Long contested jumpers with way too much dribbling. I don't know why Kawhi Leonard starts becoming Paul George in the fourth quarter sometimes with his catching the ball so high and dribbling so much before he gets into stuff. I don't know why. Just pass the ball. You know, you have James Harden to throw entry passes to you. Catch the ball close to the basket. If they double, we'll get a great shot. Especially with the way Norman Powell was shooting on Sunday. Are you kidding me? He's been struggling lately, but it was Norman Powell who reignited, or should I say ignited, anything the Clippers had on Sunday afternoon. We were down 30 to 15. This guy comes in. He had come in before 30 to 15, but... He comes in, we're already down, and starts hitting threes left and right throughout the game. Every time they left him open, it felt like he made it. And I, unfortunately, wasn't able to watch this game live, and it was on KTLA. So KTLA doesn't show replays, and the league pass has a blackout rule where you can't watch games from your own city until three days after completion. So I was struggling to find a website for the illegal games, or I'm sorry, <laughs> illegal game website where they show games because my computer wasn't working for some reason. Finally, I got my phone to work it, and it was actually the Wolves broadcast. And I thought Jim Peterson and Michael Grady, those are the two guys that do it for them. I thought they were so unbiased, and Jim Peterson had the, a great lens on what was going on with the Clippers. It's amazing how much these local analysts and commentators uh, know and are sharper, in my opinion, than these national guys. The national guys sound like fans out there, literally, when they talk especially the color commentators, the play-by-play -play guys, you know, the Kevin Harlins, the Mike Breens, they're awesome, you know, but I think a lot of the color commentators are just saying a lot of casual takes for the, for the ca for casual fan.
but these guys are so like the way Jim Peterson was talking about Amir Coffee. It was like he was watching the Clippers for three years and in, intensely. So shout out to the Wolves uh, team. But and one thing I also noticed just watching the broadcast from the Wolves perspective, they got some the we we the Clippers got some favorable calls. And I don't ever say that, but we kind of did. Even though Gobert got away with a lot of pushing like he always does, we got away with some hacks on Cat. And that flop that Tice had, was that cost him two points. That was a major flop. Blatant. Blatant. You know, I'm not going to defend that. And it ended up being a one-point win for us. But you know how many times we've been screwed by refs? I don't give a damn. How about Norman Powell, though? Huge three to make it 82-78 late in the game. And he was just fantastic all night. But Kawhi Leonard, so good. 32 points, five rebounds, one assist, two steals, and a block. One of those steals came in the fourth where he got fouled after by Ant-Man, who for whatever reason was complaining, even though it was a clear foul. Here's my favorite stat of the game. 12 for 26 for Kawhi. 26 shot attempts. James Harden was 0 for 10. Paul George was 5 for 16. I'll talk about James in a second. And Paul Moore. But when Paul George isn't shooting well, that's when I need Kawhi to jack. And that's what he did. Let's go. Winning us the game. I, you know what? He didn't close that great, but we won the game. And he was the best player on the floor. 32 points, baby, in 38 minutes. 7 for 8 from the line. And then Norman Powell. How about this? 24 points to match the number on his jersey. Three rebounds, nine for 13 shooting, and six for eight from three. He had six of our 10 threes. Ba, 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 ba. Norman Powell, baby. Plus 19. That was a high of any player on the court for both teams. Coming up, going to talk about if I was wrong. Is our matchup with the Wolves not as bad as I thought? And also going to be talking about Paul George and James Harden's performance. I got to tell you a little something about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. We are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It's demon time on Prize Picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. Demons and Goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play at prize picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. Want to play alongside some of prize picks' favorite rappers like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the prize picks community each week. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Just go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, Clippers winning this one, 89-88, Move on, moving on to a 39-20 record on the season. I'll take that. 18-12 and 12 on the road, and guess what? We're only one game behind the Minnesota Timberwolves in the loss column, two behind the Thunder, who are now in first place. We're right back in that race for the one seed. We are. Paul George, let's talk about him, right? Second game back. He started the game so badly, taking bad shots, playing non-existent off-ball defense. I thought his on-ball defense was awesome, but his off-ball defense, there was one time where he was not guarding Ant-Man. He thought he was guarding him. And then he wanted Terrence Mann to switch just out of nowhere, and he got mad at Terrence Mann. That was ridiculous. Even the Wolves commentator called him out for that. But what I don't like is... He just continues to shoot contested jumpers. Like, he has Carl Anthony Townsend go bear on him. He just shoots contested jumpers. There was one time he tried to go at Cat, and Cat moved his feet really well. I was pretty impressed with that. But that was just one time. You know, he's got to catch the ball closer to the basket. He's catching the ball at the three-point line and 18 feet away, 20 feet away constantly. And he just keeps shooting threes when he's missing threes. I know Gobert is there, but, like, at least catch the ball closer to the basket. Nothing easy. Whereas Kawhi makes it look effortless. 
That's the difference between them. Paul needs to be more of a less is more kind of player. But he's not. At least he hasn't been for his career. And I don't think he's ever going to be different at this point. But I'll say this. Seven points in the fourth, absolutely huge. And as I said, he guarded Carl Anthony Towns and really made that difference. I know he doubled, but he was the primary guy. He got super physical, and I was really happy with that. That's what I mean by... And also, having the threat of Paul on the floor, being able to run sets with him off the ball moving, that's huge. That opens up a lot for our offense. For example, there was one time where Paul George looked like he was going to go across, maybe come off the screen himself, but instead he set the back screen for Kawhi, which led to James Harden dropping that dime at the end of the game that gave us that Kawhi and one for the lead. That kind of stuff. It's such a luxury for Ty Lu to have Paul George back for those kind of situations. You know, the gravity. They, the funny part is he, they still switched that, the Wolves, and they still got burned because Harden's pass was so good. So Paul George, big time to have him back. He makes a big difference even when he's not playing well. Still, anybody that's slandering him about, you know, this and that, the facts are the facts. And I'm describing why. It really does give the coach more of a luxury, and you have to account for him. Like that shot he made in the corner, I think it was over Cat, that step back three to beat the shot clock in the fourth. No, people aren't just hitting that shot. That's a star right there. Give him some credit. PG though, 15 points, four rebounds on five for 16 shooting. Here's my problem. Three for 11 from three. Two for five from two. Three for, I mean, 11 threes. And you're shooting three for 11. And then James Harden, oh my. He was getting locked up, but he also just got a bunch of open threes and missed. Just, I just hope he can make these shots in the playoffs. Like That's all I have to say. These are easy open threes he's made all season. 0 for 10. 0 for 6 from 3. But I'll tell you what, the fact that we were he was 0 for 10 and we still won says a lot about this team. And that's the whole point of why originally we were saying it might not be the biggest de deal if Harden has a stinker scoring-wise because he still got 10 dimes, and one of them was the biggest of the game. And he was also solid defensively. A lot of crucial steals. Some, let's see how many he had. Two blocks, one steal, four points, 10 assists. He struggled against Minnesota this season because they have good point of attack, guys. Ant-Man was guarding Paul George a lot. And then Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Conley, these guys guarded Harden. But yeah, James was over 10 in 34 minutes. <laughs> we still won, though. One turnover, though. 10 to 1 assist to turnover ratio. You'll take that. And the defense, very solid. He got blown by. It was one stretch where he got blown by twice in a row. But solid rotations. There was one time where Bones Highland, by the way, rotated against Gobert at the rim and forced him to uh, swing to the corner as the low man Bones Highland was rotating. Come on. That's not going in the stat sheet. How about Amir Coffey, by the way? He was one for five, but I thought his on-ball defense was so good and his help. So he was a plus eight. That shows that. Two points, four rebounds. Terrence Mann, six points, four rebounds on two for three shooting. 0 for one from three. So solid performances by our role players. Zubat's very quiet. Two points, two rebounds on one for two shooting in 19 minutes. I think he's clearly not 100% just yet. My player of the game, Kawhi Leonard for sure. Um, definitely you can argue Norm, but it's it's the Kawhi guy. I mean, the way he does the way he does things on both ends of the floor. It's amazing. I want to say Anthony Edwards, by the way. He only shot three times in the fourth. He was like he was scared to go at Kawhi damn near. That's that's it's pretty big time with Kawhi guarding as well. I mean, of course we switched a lot, but he settles. I mean, like that's his thing. That's his flaw. He settles. One for three in the fourth, and the two misses were threes, and they were both contested. And I'll give you a stat about the Ant Man in this one. He shot. 9 for 20 in the game, but 3 for 10 from 3. 6 for 10 from 2. There were times we had where he had Norman Powell on him, and I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh. And he settled for a 3. And I was like, okay, thanks. Like, if you're going to do that, totally fine with us. Because nobody can stop you at the rim, especially when Tice is down there. So I don't know what he was thinking. Maybe he was afraid, oh, they're going to come help, but then you can't get into a mid-range. Like, that's the thing. Like, that's, that's right now Ant-Man. He has the skill. I've seen him put in some work in the post, but he still falls too in love with the Paul George, the Jason Tatum, the, you know, even with James Harden behind the three point line, starting his move all the time. I like the guys like Kawhi, catch the ball, you know, inside the arc a lot. 
work from there. Have Patton in mid-range. I don't know if Ant took one mid-range in this game. You're gonna If you're going to shoot threes with Norman Powell guarding you, be my guest. That's all I have to say about that. So was I wrong? Okay, I'll say this. Maybe I was overreacting a little bit, but I never said that we'd lose to them in a series. I just said I didn't like the matchup. And I still don't love it. I don't. Because... But we, we have, I mean, we have playoff experience. Is their offense good enough? That's the thing. I don't want to play a defense like that in the playoffs, but is their offense good enough? I did say Kawhi hadn't had his 30 against Jaden McDaniels. He got it done in this one. Huh. You know, one, one thing I also said, Westbrook against this team is no good. I didn't like that because the rim protection really bothers him because he can't shoot the ball. So when he gets the rim, maybe I'll go bear or two bigs down there. That may have helped. So, I still don't love it. I'd say after Denver, this is the worst matchup. Although the Lakers, the fact that we wouldn't really have a true home court advantage and it's LeBron and AD versus these guys, I honestly would fear the Lakers. But I don't think the Lakers got to get out of the plan before I'm talking about them. So, was I wrong? Not really. But, yes, you can say I was overreacting just a tad because it felt helpless. We got owned. It felt like they were just better than us. But... It's really about our defense. I think it's what mood we are in defensively, but also Kawhi being the best player on the floor. Defense, defense, defense. Tice, though. I thought he was so massive. Big time win. One of my favorites of the season. 89-88. 31-16. We outscored them in the second. They had eight turnovers in the second quarter. They were just getting careless. 22-18 to in the third. They won it. Man, we only scored 18. And then 22-20 to in the fourth. Clippers won it. It was neck and neck after the, you know, initial Timberwolves were up. And once we went up 31 to 30, it was pretty close the rest of the way. But what a win. What a win. We'll take it all day long. And here's the thing. Clippers are back in action on Monday night against the Milwaukee Bucks. It is a tough doubleheader, isn't it? Very tough. That is 5 o'clock Pacific time. So we'll be back to talk about that one. If we win both of those, we're serious. And it's our friend, Glenn Rivers. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more LA Clipper and LA sports content. And Locked on Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcast. Let me know what you thought about the win and anything you have to say about it. And our matchup, you know how you feel about it now against the Wolves after seeing that. The age old proverb continues. Go Clippers.